Tonight, I want to begin with this question. What is it that causes some people to be more religious than others? Could it possibly be that some are genetically predisposed to have certain spiritual experiences? Is there a God gene? Some people say that there is, or at least that this is what science is starting to show. In a recent book called The God Gene, How Faith is Hardwired into Our Genes, Dean Hamer of the National Cancer Institute argues that some people have God in their genes. He says, I'm a believer that every thought we think and every feeling we feel is the result of activity in the brain. I think we follow the basic law of nature, which is that we're a bunch of chemical reactions running around in a bag. Included among those chemical reactions, according to Hamer, are brain patterns that correlate with certain religious experiences. And so when people are involved in a spiritual activity like meditation, for example, the frontal lobe, which focuses our concentration, is active, while the the parietal lobe, which locates us in time and space, grows quiet. Nor is Dean Hamer the only molecular biologist who has made this discovery. Andrew Newberg is doing similar work at the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania, where he is studying what he calls the biology of belief. And according to Newberg, the human brain has a built-in capacity to experience God. Scientists from the University of California at San Diego call it the God module. Now, the work of these scientists is part of a wider field of science that studies the neurophysiology of religious experience, more commonly known as neurotheology. Most of these scientists are careful to say that science can neither prove nor disprove the existence of God. They are simply interested in the biology of our spirituality. Based on their research, they claim that certain parts of the human brain are pre-wired to experience spiritual phenomena. And to be specific about it, Dean Hamer has isolated the gene VMAT2 and says it is directly related to the ability to feel self-transcendence. How should Christians evaluate this kind of research? We know from Scripture that God has set eternity into the hearts of men. But can we also say that God has put eternity into our genome? Now, of course, it is true that we have an, that we have an embodied existence and that this is an inescapable fact of all religious experience. Whatever religious thoughts or spiritual feelings we have take place somewhere in our brains. And it is only to be expected that there are ways of imaging such brain activity. Some Christians thus have embraced the findings of neurotheology. They conclude that God has deliberately designed our brains in such a way that we have the physiological capacity to experience him. However, may I say that I doubt whether the current research really tells us very much about what it means to be spiritual, at least in any biblical sense of the word. The scientists who are doing this work, from everything that I have been able to see, operate with a narrow definition of what it means to be religious. It's a definition that's much closer to what you find in Eastern religion than it is to what you find in the scriptures as far as true spirituality is concerned. For them, religious experience means repeating a mantra or doing breathing exercises or having feelings of transcendence. And and therefore, these are the kinds of activities that they are trying to measure in the brain. You'll notice that absent from their list of religious experiences is anything having to do with reason. One wonders what would show up on the computer screen if scientists measured the brain activity of someone listening to expository preaching, for example, or singing a hymn that is profound in its theology or engaged in serious intercessory prayer. What science cannot tell us, of course, is whether any true religious experience uh, is where any true religious experience of God comes from. Some, but not all, of these neurotheologians seem to think that tracking brain activity actually explains where the religious experience comes from. For example, Professor Michael Persinger, who is a professor of behavioral neuroscience, calls God an artifact of the brain. But this is simply another form of scientific reductionism, of trying to reduce everything to a physical explanation without leaving room for a God of spirit and truth. The Bible tells us where religious experience comes from. It comes from the secret and inward influence of God, the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit who enables us to understand the deep truths of God, the Spirit 
who convinces us of our sinful condition and draws us to faith in Christ. The Spirit who enables us to call God Father when we pray. We cannot measure this mysterious work of the Spirit, but He does that work nonetheless. Think of what Jesus said. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you know not where, where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. If we had the right scientific equipment, could we see what is going on in the brain of someone who is under this gracious influence of the Holy Spirit? Perhaps we could. But we would still be very far from explaining God's sovereign work in the hearts and minds of sinners or of understanding the Spirit's secret influence in salvation. As it also says in the Scripture, God has set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end.